Hello and welcome to Small Box Central and today we're going to be reviewing the Minus Forum UM773 Lite. And let me tell you, this thing has just blown me away. It is that quick. On the front panel we have a clear CMOS button, power button, 3.5mm combo jack and two USB-Cs. One is USB-C Type 4, so crazy quick. And then on the back we've got power, Kensington lock, 2.5 gig LAN, two USB-3s, two HDMIs and two USB-2s for your peripherals. So, for its size, you got a lot of choice. To get on the inside, you just pull off the rubber feet. There's four of them, two big ones, two small ones, and then put a Phillips head screwdriver in there and unscrew. Then gently pry it open. And there's no cable, so just pull it out. And from here, you can change out the RAM and the Wi-Fi, as well as the M.2 storage. So I bought this bare bones, uh, so you won't get the RAM that I included. Now the RAM set I chose was the crucial 5600MHz DDR5 sodium kit. So it's 32 gig across two sticks of 16 at 5600MHz. And the storage I chose was the crucial P3 Plus Gem4 SSD. Now to give you an example of the size, this is my workstation, which is already very small. It's an ITX system, and you can just put it on the top like it's nothing it is so small it's smaller than an sfx power supply and here it is versus the fractal design defined mini c case which is already a very small case it's micro atx so overall it's about the size of a 3.5 inch hard drive i mean it's a bit taller but a bit shorter but around about the same volume i'd say so yeah tiny So jumping into the BIOS, everything seems to be there, but the first thing you'll notice is that my RAM is not running at the 5600MHz speed. There is no option to enable XMP. There is a setting right here that you can see, a memory target speed, um, but in Windows it just shows up as 4800. So don't waste your money on expensive RAM. Starting off with some benchmarks, I thought I'd run Geekbench 6, and the results are pretty astounding. So the score was... 2042 on single core and 10,387 on multi core. And to put that in perspective, it actually beat my custom workstation that has a 3700X in it, which is only four years old. As madness. For the GPU test, obviously, it's not going to be a 3070 like in my workstation. But still, considering its integrated graphics, 27,000, well, near enough, 27,000 is just insane. Like, my GPU is twice the size of this entire computer, so I, I can't knock it for that. Moving on to Time Spy, the results are fairly similar. 2,684, which is pretty good. Graphics 2380 and CPU score 9726, which very close to my 3700X. Not quite beating it, but for the size, again, I mean, it's using like half the power. It's just ridiculous how well this thing is doing. Moving on to some PS2 emulation, we are running SSX3 on PCSX2 at four times native resolution. And it just flies. It is so good. We get an average of 49.9 FPS, and I mean, it maxes out at 50 anyway because it's the power region. 1% uh, lows of 37.5 and 0.1% lows of 32.8. But if I wasn't running the benchmark, I wouldn't have noticed. Okay, next up we've got Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 again in PCSX2 and again in 4 times native resolution. And it just flies. It does it like it's nothing. Again, an average of 49.9 and slightly better 1% lows and 0.1% lows. But extremely smooth, extremely playable. You could probably even bump it up to 5 times native and you'd still get results like this, to be honest. Moving on to some PC games next, first up is PUBG. Get a bit old now and notoriously poorly optimized. We're running at a 1080p low with a little bit of medium here and there. And I mean, it runs. I'd say it's playable, but I wouldn't say it's competitive. You get a lot of stuttering as you can see with the 1% lows and the 0.1% lows. But I mean, if you just want to play with some bots with friends for a casual game, it's fine, 
but you're not going to be winning any chicken dinner with this, let's be honest. Up next, we have Battlefield 2042 running at 1080p low, just like we were with PUBG. But bear in mind, this game is a lot newer, looks a lot nicer, and you'd expect it to do a little bit worse. But actually, it's, it's pretty playable. I mean, average of 33.6, so like, it's not great, but it's okay. <laughs> Once you get into those hectic areas, though, it will get choppy and almost unplayable, like, as you can see with the stats. 0.1% low of 1.1 FPS. Pretty, pretty painful. Now we have Doom Eternal again at 1080p, but this time on high. And this game is so well optimized. It just flies. Average of 57.5 FPS, so really close to that 60 mark. But the thing you got to remember is that this, this system does not have a graphics card in it. So considering we're averaging almost 60 FPS at 1080p on high with no graphics card, it's to me just insane. And the final game we're testing today is Rocket League. We're testing it at 1080p at high quality settings with all the little checkboxes ticked. Get an average of 62.7 FPS, 1% low of 23.2 and 0.1% low of 17.9. So now and then it will drop down and you will notice it. I would not play competitively with this, but if you just want to play with friends, it's more than adequate. I mean, and again, we're playing at pretty much max settings, so you can just turn it down. So overall, would I recommend the UM773? Yeah, yeah, I would. I mean, I wouldn't buy it just for gaming, but I mean, if you want something small that takes up pretty much zero space and you want to do all your standard work, maybe a bit of like video editing or photo editing, it can do it no problem. And the power it uses is barely anything, like it's 12 watts and 68 watts under load, which I mean, for a full system is just really, really impressive. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you'd like to buy the UM773, I'll have a link in the description. Let me know in the comments what mini PCs you want me to review next, and I'll see you in the next video.